Kung Lung Ma, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. My first official long preaching video. Some of y'all are just like clicking away right now. Please don't. Please give me a chance. Let me talk to you for several minutes, not just a few. Please don't click away. Please stay right there. I promise it'll be worth your while. Pretty exciting for me. First ever long sermon. I can just talk basically however long I want for this one. I'm going to try to limit myself to 30 minutes tops. No longer than that. Hopefully I'll hit at least 10 minutes. I'm all on my way now. I told y'all I love to ramble, right? Here's me rambling. To get into the meat and potatoes of it tonight, uh, it's Sunday night, one verse, just one verse, and it's one you know, whether you're a Christian or not, is John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. By far the most popular verse, I believe Billy Graham is the one who made that verse so incredibly popular in American culture. Excuse me. And um, what a thing to put in a preaching video. I could edit that out. Probably won't. <laughs> and the verse says it all. I can see why it was chosen. If not by Billy Graham, then by whoever and however many preachers did make it as popular as it is. It's the gospel message in one verse. God loved the world. He sent his son. Whoever believes in his son doesn't perish, but has everlasting life. That's simple. And that's the main message that I want to get across on this channel through all the video games and all the profanity that I use, through all the preaching videos, through all the challenges, through any sketches I may do or any games I may make. That is a thing potentially in the future, possibly. I really hope so. I don't think you guys can see much of my hand gestures. I may need to adjust the camera for future videos. Essentially what I want everyone on this channel to know Jesus Christ saves is definitely like the message that I live my life by. It changed me. I know it can change you as well. Whoever's listening, whether you be a Christian and you've already experienced God's power in your life or you're not a Christian, maybe a hardened atheist who's like, um, forget God. There's no way he's relevant. There's no way he's possible. Look at the world we live in. Look at how bad my life has been. Look at how bad my friends' and family's lives have been. Forget God. I want to explore all the big questions, you know, why is, why is there evil in the world? Why is there pain and suffering? Why does a good God allow horrible things? I want to explore all those things. But for this video, for this foundation of what I'm going to be doing with this entire video, all my little short exhortation speeches, kind of piggybacks the message I left last night. It's the very simple truth that God loves you. Plain and simple. You've heard it a hundred times. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm burping so much. Sorry. <laughs> I can be a little gassy. Probably something else I should edit out of this. And as cliched and as tried as that saying is, God loves you, smile, God loves you, I want you to know that it's true. God, and by the way, his name is Jesus. It's not anything else. It's not Allah. It's not Shiva. It's not Krishna. It's not Buddha. It's not the Jesus of the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not the Jesus of the Mormons. It's not Amaterasu and any other God that you can possibly think of out there. His name is Jesus. He's real. He's personal. And he loves you. Again, I'm not going into all the debates and all the arguments of how and why and what. I don't mind talking about it in the comments. I'm sure a lot of my comment sections will be just giant flame wars. I have no doubt of that whatsoever. And just the fact that I called out other gods that I don't believe in. Um, if this video gains any momentum, any notoriety or fame... Those will probably be debate points. Undoubtedly, they would be debate points with several people by my saying that their religion and their God is not true. 
and is not correct. That's a huge debate point right there. But it's very important for you, my viewer, possibly even one of my freaks. And you don't have to be a Christian to be one. I, you know, I hope this is a message that will reach you. I hope that you will either now or one day later choose to believe it. But it's important for me as a Christian to tell you that God loves you. And the God that loves you is Jesus. And he came to this world, born of a virgin. I, I, don't, I don't consider myself a fundamentalist, but I believe in a lot of what the fundamentalists believe in. Jesus, the God of the universe, came to this world, was born of the Virgin Mary, lived a perfect life, showing us how to live, setting the example. Died on the cross, shedding his blood for the forgiveness of my sins and your sins. And then three days later, rose from the dead. And the reason the Creator left heaven to come to earth was love. Love for me, love for you, love for everyone. He loves you. I want to express that and that alone in this video. I thought to myself before making this video, you know, I should probably do a traditional Bible study, you know, have like a list of verses, you know, the different what kinds of love and how God loves you in different kinds of ways and maybe even throw in some intellectual arguments of why there's pain and suffering and stuff like that in the world. And after I prayed about it, what I felt the Lord leading me to do was simply speak from the heart. Just to speak to you, God, I use John 3.16, a verse everyone knows, and to just speak my heart to you, to all of you. However few or many that may be, whether they see it, I doubt they'll see it tonight. There might be some uh, night owls out there like me who see it tonight. But to everyone, I want you to know that God loves you, and He loves you so much. He loves you so much that He came to this world, died on the cross for you. He didn't have to do that, but He came to this world, died on the cross for you, and then rose again three days later, later guaranteeing eternal life for you and me and as many as will receive Him. And there's another verse that says, as many who will call upon him, he will make them sons and daughters of the Most High. And we have Google. You don't believe me? And by the way, you don't have to believe me. Google John 3.16 if you haven't heard of it. Google the thing that I just said. See if it's in the Bible or not. Google God's love. See if he loves you or not. See if he didn't prove his love for you. Um, probably everyone who watches this video, or almost everyone's heard the story of Jesus, heard the gospel. That mean, That's Greek for good news. That's church fancy Christianese for good news. The good news is that God loves you. He died on the cross so your sins or Sin is kind of a church word as well. It may, basically means the things you've done wrong, the evils that you've done. And we've, we've all done them. I'm not that's another video in and of itself, another sermon of me saying what is sin and what isn't. I'm not here to try to convince anyone, at least not you know through argument or through reason, at least not. I'll do it in other videos. I love that stuff. But in this video, it's a simple statement. God loves you. I'm going to say it over and over again in this video and in many, many, many other videos, maybe even some of the video game videos. If you're around me, you're going to hear about Jesus. That's the the tall, the short, the, the plain and the simple, and the complex of it. You're going to hear about Jesus when you're around me. And the core essential part of God is that He is love. Look that up as well. I'll give you a hint. First John, God is love. And He loves you so much that even though you've done bad things, and you know you have, we all have, some more than others. I'm probably on the I'm probably on the heavier side of things to be honest. And I'll get into more of that later as well. God loves you so much that he came to earth as Jesus, died a very painful death, 
I'll get into that as well. There's so much to go into with you guys. A very painful death on the cross. And he did all of this as a way to show us how much he hates sin, but loves you and me. There's another little hint about what I said about last night. You know, to, make, to make everyone think, well, is the God of the Old Testament really a loving God? Because he does so much wrath and so much judgment in the Old Testament. And the answer is God does hate sin. He takes sin very seriously. But that's why Jesus died for us. So that sin could be forgiven. A price needed to be paid, and Jesus paid that price. That's what the death on the cross is all about. God loves you. He loves you. You. Don't look away from that camera. I'm talking right to you. If you've stayed with me this long, don't, don't leave me now. Don't just click away from the video now. Especially not if you're feeling, man, I'm kind of believing this guy. I kind of feel what he's saying is right. Don't leave now. You've stuck in this far. Stay with me the rest of the way. God loves you, despite the fact that you've done bad things, despite the fact that you are a sinner. And we all are. None of us are special in that sense. We have all sinned <clears throat> and come short of the glory of God. Another verse. Again, look it up. I want to leave a lot of research to my viewers. I want you guys to think. I want you guys to dig. See if what I'm saying is true or not. Even though you're a sinner, he loves you right now. And right now he's calling you to be one of his children, to be a son or a daughter of the Most High God of the universe. He's calling you right now to repent of your sins and to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Very traditional line. If you've been in a church, you've heard that line, no doubt. And I hope that maybe this time you're hearing it a little bit differently. Maybe this time you're more carefully considering and thinking a little bit deeper and saying, hey, maybe I really do need to do that. Maybe I do need to make Jesus my Lord and Savior. Maybe you've heard it a hundred times and this time it's just one more and you're just like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. You know, I stuck with you this far, Jesus freaking gamer. You haven't convinced me of anything. Um, in that case, at this point, leave the video. Click away. Um, you know, I still love you. You can still watch my videos, or you can stick around and hit the dislike button, whatever you want. The rest of this video will not be for you. You can listen if you want to, but it won't be for you. Now, for anyone who's left and is not a believer in Jesus Christ, but you, this time is some, either you've heard it for the first time and you believe what I'm saying, or you've heard it a hundred times, but this time you're just like, for some reason, I don't even know why, but for some reason, this time is taken. This time I believe it. This time I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I want to accept him into my heart. Like you maybe have never heard before, or you've heard it a hundred times, but this time it's sticking. To accept Jesus into your heart, to demystify that, what that means is you do believe what I've said. You believe that God loves you. You believe that you're a sinner. You believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, and you believe that he rose again. That's, that's the gospel. If you believe those things that I just said, again, whether it's the first time you've heard it or the 1,000th time you've heard it, but this time, for whatever reason, you want to believe it. You're ready to believe it. To accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you simply believe those things and you talk to God. Prayer. Another word we've heard a hundred times in our culture. Um, in any culture, the word prayer is used for pretty much every religion that involves a God that you talk to. And, you know, prayer is a real thing. If God is real, so is prayer. I guess some people could argue that, but again, this isn't an arguing or a debating video. God is real and prayer is real. If you believe the things I just said, if this time it gets you, even if you don't understand why, I really want to encourage you. Reach out to God. Reach out in your own words and just expressing, you know, you do believe these things. You're convinced that he does love you, that you're a sinner, that he died for you, and that he rose again. 
<clears throat> and if you want a little guide to say something, if you want something to say or like a model prayer to follow, I'm going to offer you one. So pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I, I, I don't even know why, but this time, I do believe that you love me. I'm convinced that you love me. And I believe that you, Jesus, are, you are the one true God. The stories that I've heard about you, or for those of you who haven't heard, maybe it's the first time you've heard it, I'm not leading a good model prayer, am I? The story is true. I believe that you, Jesus, lived a perfect life, died on the cross for me, shedding your blood so my sins can be forgiven, and that you rose again on the third day. Please forgive me of my sins. Please be my Lord, my God, my Savior. I love you too. Help me to live the rest of my life for you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, welcome not just to the freaks. In fact, you don't even have to subscribe to my channel. Welcome to the church. Welcome to the family of God. You're my brother or sister now. You're family. And I'm so glad you're here. Now that you've prayed that prayer, does it, I'm not going to say it doesn't, you can do whatever you want, but if someone tries to tell you that based on some of the things that you've been addicted to, some of the things that maybe you're going to find you can't just quite give up yet, I'm telling you, and I can, I'm pretty sure I can back it up with the Word of God, there's a Bible over here, I know you can't see it, but there is one, that you are a Christian. If you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, even if there's some things in your life that you're pretty convinced are sin, um, that the church is convinced are sin, you are still a believer in Jesus Christ. Don't let any thought come your way saying, well, you're not really a Christian, you're still doing this. Don't let those thoughts take a hold of your mind and pull you away from God. You are saved. You are a Christian. You may need some help. You may need a little bit of help getting yourself out of that pit, but the Lord's going to send you that help. Ask Him for that help. Now that He is your Lord and Master, the Lord is, we use the word Lord a lot here in English. The Lord, to say the Lord, the word Lord basically means what it did way back in feudal England. A Lord is someone who reigns over a certain territory. The Lord, capital L, that probably looks bad in the camera. He is the Lord or Master of all. He reigns over the entire universe. He is the Lord of everything. Why the word Lord, you know, took precedence over Father or God or Master, I don't know. But it's Lord. So, now that you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're allowed to ask Him for stuff. If you need help with something, ask Him. If you need something, ask Him. And if I might, if I might make a recommendation, ask Him, um, one, for a Bible. And if you're watching this, if this, somehow this video gets to another country where Bibles aren't everywhere, like in the United States, where I live, ask him for a Bible. That's, that's very important. Um, if you don't have one, your Christianity is okay. And you can st God will still talk to you even if you don't have a Bible. Yes, I do believe God talks to people. Um, if you stuck with me this far, I'm going to assume you don't think I'm crazy. And if you're a non-believer and you stuck with me this far, just see what the video's like. Um, I'm one of those Christians. I believe God talks to people nowadays. I believe I've heard the voice of the Lord myself. If you do, back, and back to the main point, if you're in a place where you don't have a Bible, it is okay. It'd be great if you had a Bible, but you're still a Christian. God can still talk to you. Pray. Ask Him for the things you need. Ask Him for a Bible if it's hard for you to get one. Ask Him to unite you with other believers who also know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. God will provide those things. Maybe not, it's not like someone's going to be teleported to your room like in 
Star Trek, where it's just like, well, beam me up, Scotty, and boom, there's someone beside you. Nothing like that. And God doesn't always work just instantaneously. Miracles don't always happen. That's not how God always works. Sometimes He just works through day-by-day -day life. But as you ask Him for the things you need, He will hook you up. He will provide for you. So if you don't have a Bible, ask Him for one. If you don't know any real Christians, um, and you know what I'm talking about, the, the people who say they're Christians, but you know they're hypocrites and they're fakes, as opposed to the people, they may... They may not fit the church's stereotype. They may not always be, you know, suit and tie, button up, dressed to impress, you know, you know, some middle white, middle class white person or whatever. But, but you know that they're real Christians. You know that they follow God. I think both Christians and non-Christians know, to at least some degree, generally speaking, who the real believers are. You know, ask God to hook you up with those people. And if you know where you can get a Bible, get one as soon as you can and start reading it. Um, Old or New Testament, whatever. A lot of um, pastors recommend you read John first. If I'm going to give a personal recommendation, and if you just prayed the prayer after me, I guess I should give one. I guess that'd be responsible of me. I'm going to stick with John. I'm going to stick with John it's actually a very different story from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's still about Jesus. It's still, it's still um, the story of the life of Jesus Christ. It's a bit different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'd still say start with John because I like the perspective it gives. I personally just like it. That's really the only solid reason I can give you at the moment. If you don't want John, start wherever you want. Every book of the Bible is good. Um, and has God's seal of approval on it, so go for it. <laughs> and if you know believers, if you know someone who is a Christian, I'm going to challenge you to tell them, hey, I became a Christian. Saw this really weird guy on YouTube, and for some reason it stuck this time. So I'm one of you guys now. Could you help me out? And those real Christians, they will help you out. Because you're like I just said earlier, you're a member of the family. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Um, it's like, should I even say, you know, hit the like button, subscribe at the end of a video like this? I'm going to do it because if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and I somehow played a part in that, one, I am incredibly humbled that the Lord would use me in that way. And I really hope that this channel will lead many, many people to Jesus. And if it's only one or two, that's fine as well. You are worth all my YouTube videos. You're worth all the time I put into it. And I will ask you to like and subscribe because I want to get this message out. I know there's a thousand other preachers out there preaching this message. You know, why do we need one more? Well, if you listen to me, well, maybe you don't like me. Maybe I'm just the random guy God led you to and you just happened to stumble upon. And it took this time, not because I'm impressive or sound good or anything. The Holy Spirit was simply moving on your heart, and you were convinced this time, man, I really do need Jesus. This is, this is for real. It may have anything to do with me. I'll ask you to hit the like and subscribe button, whether you like me or not, because someone else needs to hear what you just heard and what just changed your life. Someone else needs to hear that too. And because God loves them, they deserve to hear it. I'm not that important. The gospel message is. So I will ask you to share this video. I will ask you to subscribe to this channel. Um, if you found me beneficial, please hit subscribe. I put up a little bit of Bible every single day to make you think, to encourage you, to exhort you. Um, I do, Like I said in my extended intro, I do want to make this a business. I would love to make YouTube a paid lifestyle. I'd love this to be my job. But even if it's not, I want to get the message of Jesus Christ out there. I want to have fun. <clears throat> I want to spread a little bit of joy and happiness in the world. But more than that, I really, really want to tell people about Jesus. So if you'll share this video with someone that you think this could minister to or help, or maybe you're just like, doggone it, they need to hear about Jesus. I'm going to give them one more chance to hear about him. And here's this guy here. Um, for what, or maybe you're just, hey, maybe you just want to troll your friends. Or like, if, you, if you're a non-believer and you stuck this far and you're like, another one of those. 
I'm gonna troll one of my friends. Yeah, tell them this is an important message. Listen to this all the way to the end. Share it anyway. By all means, share this. From my perspective as a Christian, I don't care what reason you share this message, the fact that the gospel of Jesus Christ is being spread regardless of your motive suits me just fine. I'm happy one way or the other. Um, and this video, I will monetize this video on YouTube. It is my original content. But even if I don't make a penny off of this, if one person will listen to this and believe on Jesus, or even if they don't believe in Jesus, if they just hear this message, and it's just one more, one more drop of water that's watering the seed of the gospel that's in their hearts. More on that in another message later, I'm sure. Uh, all these things I've talked about tonight, I have no doubt that I'll be getting to them in some future YouTube video. If this is just one more drop of water watering the seed of the Word of God in their heart, that's fine too. And if this is nothing more than a word of judgment to the non-believer when they stand before God, and God just says, hey, you saw that random dude on that YouTube video. You heard the truth. You don't have an excuse. For all of those reasons, regardless of motivation, I will ask you, you know, troll and fellow Christian to share this video. Share it as much as you can. Share it abroad. Put it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, you know, wherever, whatever, blah. You know, make gifts, make segments, link to it, whatever. I want the gospel of Jesus Christ to be preached, and I want it to be as widespread as possible, and I want everyone to know the simple truth that God loves them. Just to reiterate the main point of this entire video and the title of this video, God loves you. Thank you for watching. I really hope that at this point you've become my brother or sister in Christ. If not, I didn't say anything overly convincing or anything overly intellectual. That wasn't the point of this video. This video was an appeal from the heart. So one way or the other, like, subscribe, um, join the freaks if you so desire. I'd love to have you be a part of my YouTube community and the YouTube community in general. I love you guys. God bless.